Thank you, choir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ann and Kathy. Thank you. We welcome Lynn and Keith now to the front, as well as any consistory members that we have that would like to come up and stand with the family. There you go. Now in your bulletin, you should have this insert. I invite you to take it out and, and follow along. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, and so it is with Christ. There is always a call for celebration when our church receives new members. We as a church family welcome all, and especially today with great praise and thanksgiving, we welcome Keith and Lynn and Justin Streisick into our church family at St. Mark's UCC. We give thanks to God for his grace and guidance and blessing, a God who has created and is creating, a God who has come to us in Christ to make us new, a God who works in us and others by the Holy Spirit, a God who is still speaking. Keith and Lynn, and I know Justin isn't here this morning, but we are including him. Keith, Lynn, and Justin, do you repent of your sins and denounce wickedness, evil, and injustice in our communities and this world? Do you accept the power of the Holy Spirit and the word of Jesus Christ to become the one God has made you to be? I do. Do you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior? Put your trust in him and promise to learn more about him. Follow him and serve others in his name. And will you promise to support this congregation with your time, talents, resources, gifts, and tithes, participating regularly in the worship of good works of St. Mark's and St. James, United Church of Christ, Praying for its leaders, its congregation, our community, the pastor, and the unity of this church for the sake of the gospel. Will. will you invite and welcome others into a relationship with Jesus Christ for the sake of transforming the world? Will. And to the congregation, will you welcome these before you as beloved children of God and members of this church. Amen. Will you support and care for them, pray for them, love them, work with them, and encourage them in all Christ-led ways? Amen. Heavenly God, pour out your Holy Spirit and bless these people, even as they, in turn, bless the people around them. We ask your blessing on all who are gathered here today, that they are one with Christ. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. As pastor and with the support of the St. Mark's Sistry, I welcome you, Keith and Lynn and Justin, as our newest church members. Be richly blessed in the ways of faithful community. Be blessed to be a blessing to those outside the structures of this beautiful physical church building, knowing that our church extends as far as the people will take it, so that others may come to know the love and grace and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And welcome. Keith, welcome. I'll get your certificates. And I have one for Justin as well. And I'll stop by the house. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, thank you. And I want to encourage you, if you uh, have some time after the service, to join us in the back because there's cake back there. There'll be some beverages, coffee, and that kind of thing as we continue the celebration of our newest members. Thank you. morning. This morning's reading is the 72nd Psalm, verses 1 through 19, which is a psalm of King Solomon. Give justice to the king, O God, and righteousness to the king's son. Help him judge your people in the right way. Let the poor always be treated fairly. May the mountains yield prosperity for all, and may the hills be fruitful, because the king does what is right. Help him to defend the poor, to rescue the children of the, of the needy, and to crush their oppressors. May he live as long as the sun shines, as long as the moon continues in the skies. Yes, forever. May his rain be as refreshing as the springtime rains, like the showers that water the earth. May all the godly flourish during his reign. May there be abundant prosperity until the end of time. May he reign from sea to sea and from the Euphrates River to the ends of the earth. Desert nomads will bow before him. His enemies will fall before him in the dust. The western kings of Tarshish and the islands will bring him tribute. The eastern kings of Sheba and Seba will bring him gifts. All, kind, all kings will bow before him and all nations will serve him. He will rescue the poor when they cry to him. He will help the oppressed who have no one to defend them. He feels pity for the weak and the needy and he will rescue them. He will save them from oppression and from violence for their lives are precious to him. Long live the king. May the gold of Sheba be given to him. May the people always pray for him and bless him all day long. May there be abundant crops throughout the land, flourishing even on the mountaintops. May the fruit trees flourish as they do in Lebanon, sprouting up like grass in a field. May the king's name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun shines. May all nations be blessed through him and bring him praise. Bless the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does such wonderful things. Bless his glorious name forever. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for that wonderful reading, Scott. Thank you. Psalm 72 is a prayer. 
I, I was told once long ago that I should pray through the Psalms regularly. One Psalm a day lifted as prayer, and in doing so, I would deepen my understanding of the relationship between God and myself. Well, I do read through the Psalms. I pray them, reflect on them, preach over them, and while I still don't fully understand this relationship between God and myself, <laughs> God is a mystery. It has deepened my relationship with him. Psalm 72 is a prayer asking God to bring about his rule on earth, his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven through the reign of a king. The writer of the psalm on behalf of the Israelite people looks and hopes for a new era, one that is created by God and not by the people themselves. One in which God rules through this uh, benevolent and wise and compassionate and powerful king. This king will bring about justice, prosperity, long life, dominion over enemies, submission of other kings, and overall peace. It's believed by some that this is an inauguration prayer or poem as David steps into kingship. And as you look at these verses, you can see how the author is looking to God to provide for their king, to be a king above all other kings. Give the king your justice, O God. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May he have dominion from sea to sea. May desert tribes bow down before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings render him tribute and bring gifts. May all the kings fall down before him and all nations serve him. <laughs> Complete obsequiousness, but not for the sake of this individual king. Not for his power, not for his glory, nor riches or wealth, for his sake. But rather a king is there to bring about God's will. A king who will do just that. To help bring God's kingdom onto earth. A kingdom as it is in heaven. And we know that God's kingdom in heaven is one in which pain and aches and maladies and scars are gone. And weakened muscles and falling limbs and failing limbs and broken speech are no more. For Revelation tells us, He will wipe every tear from their eye and there will be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, or pain, all these things will be gone forever. And Paul, the Apostle Paul, echoes this as he writes his letter to the Corinthians. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and we sigh. And it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that those dying bodies will be swallowed up by life will be filled with new life, new energy, healing and hailness. Now it's clear that in this psalm there's a purpose to elevate this king above all others. And why? To bring about peace and healing and justice and righteousness. We can see this quite clearly in this psalm. May he judge the poor with justice. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people. Give deliverance to the children in need and crush the oppressor. For he delivers the needy when he calls the poor and him who has no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life and he rescues them. From their sufferance. 
This is the king that the people are seeking. The king that the people are praying for. This is the king the people really need. Certainly the poor and oppressed, the weak and neglected, the, the hungry and imprisoned. But this is also the king that those with power and influence and wealth and control are in need of also. <laughs> so as we talk about this king, do you kind of see where this might be going? This may be an inaugural prayer for the incoming King David, but isn't this the same prayer that for so many generations before and since David, uh, the people have lifted up and cried out and uttered and prayed? Isn't this what the people were looking for and hoping for and anticipating ever since David? A king that would... Bring not only hope, but peace. There's a prophecy in this psalm, whether intentional, like we see in our Old Testament book of prophets, or incidental. And either way, God has a hand in this. God knows what is coming. Uh, this may not have been God's first choice of his plans, but God always has a plan. God always has an answer. <laughs> People are seeking a king, like the one that the like the one Isaiah prophesies about. And yes, Isaiah predates Jesus by about seven hundred years, and and predates David by almost three hundred years. But nevertheless, Isaiah stated that this coming king would be named, called Emmanuel. God with us. And that he would come from David's line of ancestry. This king, the Messiah, will be full of power and understanding. He will preach the gospel to the meek and to those whose hearts are hardened against God. He will heal the blind and lame and deaf and diseased and broken hearted and raise the dead. A savior. A Messiah, a king to both lead and save the people. A king to help bring about God's kingdom here on earth and to prepare us for God's kingdom in heaven. These are the same prayers we lift today. We need to be healed. We need to feel compassion. We need to belong and to know that we are loved. And so God did send another king, Jesus Christ. It is this king that we have eagerly awaited, not only to celebrate his first coming, that, that uh, beautiful baby boy born in the manger, Bethlehem, but also the second coming of this king, the one who will usher in an age of peace and joy and love. May people be blessed in him. All nations call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Thanks be to God. Friends, in just a moment, our uh, ushers are going to come around with the offering plates as we uh, take up our collection. And I want to thank you ahead of time for your generosity, your grace, your giving, not only as we near the end of our, our year together, but as you have throughout the year.
Friends, as I lift up these offerings, and since our altar is temporarily blocked off, I'm going to place these on the front seat of the pew. But as I hold these up as an offering to God, would you pray a prayer of dedication and thanksgiving? Gracious God, we offer you thanks and praise for this season of anticipation, this season of effort. As we prepare for the birth of your son, we share our tithes and our offerings with the joy and excitement that are common when people anticipate the birth of a new child. Bless these gifts in your holy name. Amen. Amen.